Well, first of all, I would like to express my full gratitude and my people's uh, and government's gratitude, Mr. Gazan. I would also like to thank the International Foundation, Baltasar Gazan, and your team for having given us the opportunity to be here, learn, and explain the situation of our people, situation that they are enduring, they have been enduring for the last 40 years. Clearly, when we arrived yesterday, we saw that, well, I'm, I'm shocked. I've learned so very much. From the different presentations and panelists, and I have really used your information. And from that information, I've understood that we do not stand alone in our struggle, that in the world we do not only have governments, oppressors, but we also have those people who fight, who struggle, and who try to promote and advance human rights and humankind and in its nature, and try to find the best way to rule the world we all inhabit. This is very important, this is very interesting, and it has led or given way to great hope in all the people of the world, stakes, the, the steps, historic steps that have been taken by Mr. Garzón regarding former Chilean president. And so all over the world now, we all hope that perpetrators of heinous crimes will not flee law, will not stay outside the law, that they will be held accountable and they'll have to, to uh, be punished. They will not go unpunished. And so very interesting steps have been taken. Still, it, it was well known in, in, in America, this case, because Pinochet has been there, and because some of the people in the government um, felt they were in a strong position, and so they felt protected. I would like to apologize because maybe well, I don't, I don't have a great command of Spanish, but I hope that you are all understanding what I mean here. And that's where, in Latin America, there was great repercussion. But I think penetration is increasing in Africa as well with initiatives that we just heard, well, yesterday and today, which I think adds hope to African peoples and other peoples all over the world. And which in turn will reduce the ferocity of fierceness of those perpetrators that thought would go and punish regardless of their contribution to those crimes. And so I would like to use this opportunity to, for, to thank you all for your participation, for your promotion and defense of human rights wherever they've been broken. It is so interesting to try uh, and understand the problem in Western Sahara, which used to be one of the colonies that uh, Spain managed in Africa, plus Equatorial Guinea, are uh, the only two Spanish colonies in Africa, if I'm not mistaken. And so, the Sahrawi people live in there. They are African Muslim country. It's the only one where they speak Spanish in, in the region. In the northern side of Africa is the only Spanish-speaking country in the 
Islamic Arab world ever since the colonialism started in 84 Saharawi people was colonized and in a few years time we saw the start of the liberation movement of all these peoples and the Saharawi people takes active part in that movement after the declaration of United Nations Declaration number 1415, according to which all peoples are entitled to to have their own choices through referendum, in 1970 there is a, uh, there is a demonstration in the main square, claiming their right to choose self-determination. But this peaceful demonstration was violently fought by the Spanish army back then. And there were many victims, many casualties, injured people, a large number of people were arrested. And it was harsh, it was harsh on the people to the extent that the Sahrawi people, after that experience, decides that they need to take armed response to advocate their rights. So in 73, 10th of May, they start, and on the 20th, they carry out the first military operation against the Spanish army. Which leads to a war that lasts until October 74, when the United Nations requested Spain to set a referendum for the self determination of the Sahara with people. So they need to start getting the referendum ready. At the same time, in 75, the UN sent an investigation commission into Sahara to produce a report on the situation claiming that all Saharawi people and the Polisali Front are dependent on the Western Sahara. There is a truce and peace by Spain and the Polisari Front, according to which Spain is committed to the defense of Sahara and borders and the rights of Sahrawi people until the time when they elect a government that will be in charge of the administration of the territory. They start taking a census of the population for the referendum. There is opposition there. Working with Mauritania, Algeria, there are different meetings held so that they would share it, all three of them. Algeria refuses. They have a clear stand there. Back then, Algeria uh, was undergoing a revolution, one of the most violent revolutions against colonialism. Mauritania, instead, is uh, carried away by Morocco and they start planning a way to share Sahara together with Morocco and together with the Spanish government of, back then. If I'm not mistaken, the ceasefire did not last for long because the Spanish government was trying to find a withdrawal, a way out with the few conventions that were signed into afterwards. So the agreement entered into by Spain and the Polisario Front means that there is an exchange of prisoners because that's something that both sides really wanted. But Spain, in its promise to defend, uh, defend sorry, the Sahara finds itself in a new situation, and that's the problem they are having. The interests and agreements that they had ready, but 
It is also true that Morocco brings this before the International Court of uh, The Hague, claiming sovereignty over Sahara, Morocco and Mauritania. In October 75, there is a ruling according to which there is no bond or sovereignty link between the Sahrawi people and the kingdoms of Morocco, nor a sovereignty link between Sahrawi people and the Mauritanian country. In the face of this ruling, or in the light of this ruling, Morocco tries a second maneuver and creates the Green Parade, that's the name it was given. A group of Moroccan citizens, over 350,000 uh, Moroccan citizens. But, what, what, please, could you focus on the relationship between this situation and universal justice? Otherwise, you'll run out of time. Thank you, thank you very much. So I would like to use the three minutes I have left, if you are not giving me an extra minute that I would, could, could really use, because I had so much to say, I could use that extra minute. Current situation, for all these years, we've had quite a clear international leg, um, legitimacy or lawfulness. We have had conventions, we have had treatments with the UN, we have the Security Council, we have the peace plan, peacekeeping plan that was agreed upon by the parties according to which there should be a referendum in Western Sahara. But 1992. So far, 24 years after the ceasefire, the referendum still has not taken place. The breaches of human rights, tortures are to be found all over the Western Sahara. The press blockade about what's going on on, on Western Sahara is present. And there are many rapporteurs and many legal experts, MPs, delegations that, uh, that are related to the Sahara with people they've seen how they've been not, they haven't been allowed to enter into this territory. Courts, well, actually it is the military that are convicting peaceful dem demonstrators. We have over 73 political prisoners, or political prisoners, for their affiliations. We find it is very needed, very much needed, that the international community, the EU, that universal jurisdiction makes everything in their power so that this problem that's been lasting for way too long and that has been recognized internationally in all aspects, it is an invaded people. It is surviving in very difficult situations. Why should they have this kind of genocide, this crime against the Sahrawi people? So is there an open claim? On the grounds of uh, universal jurisdiction, we lodged claims against the Moroccan invasion. We also have found mass graves that have been declared as, as such as mass graves. And, and we hope this can all be used for the Moroccan regime, which is the, the, the inciter of all these will be finally convicted. And so the Sahrawi people can enjoy full self-determination. Questions. One is for Mohammed. In the face of uh, political willingness on part of the international community to resolve the conflict of uh, the Saharan people. What is left to the people? Thank you. Thank you for the question. Well, the situation in Western Sahara, 
conflict, a situation that has been going on for 40 years now. As I mentioned before, international unlawfulness that is enjoyed by this, I mentioned international unlawfulness uh, that this conflict enjoys, but the impossibility to apply the resolutions, the resolutions that were passed over these 41 years. So we are facing now a very difficult situation, lack of flexibility on part of Morocco of not accepting, after accepting a referendum for self-determination, uh, after having accepted the results of the referendum, and after this election, well, in the face of this referendum, Morocco can see that he will not win the referendum and then takes a, stop, a step backwards and stops the, uh, the process. So, so for six months, they decided, well, if they had done the, the referendum, the Sahrawi people will have the freedom to choose their destiny or their fate. Well, amongst the, one of the, uh, some of the oceans, we had the integration into the Moroccan territory or a free state or also an autonomous state. So we are not against any of the choices, but all any solution should be based on democracy. And then the Sahrawis are the ones who should be the ones to decide on their fate. So the United Nations set up the uh, electoral body. Well, and Morocco didn't like it. So for the last 24 years, this problem after the ceasefire, neither United Nations of the Council of Security could not implement the resolutions. Year after year, the Sahrawi people are losing hope, are losing hope that the international community can impose a solution to this conflict ensuring that human rights of the Sahrawi people to have freedom are respected. In this case, young people and the population in general has lost, lost uh, trust and hope in the international community. 23 years of wait, 23 years of suffering, 23 years in an unbearable situation, refugee camps, 23 years of tortures, detentions, of occupied territories, enclosed or sieges. So, no good perspectives. They are pushing us much more. This helplessness on the part of the international community is pushing us to wage war because we cannot really find a way.